BIOS or any of the major manufacturers of BIOS out there. Instead, I went to Dell's website. And why is that? Why not go straight to the source? Well, that's because those manufacturers of BIOS will really take their BIOS and they'll sell it to Dell, and then Dell will modify it for their purposes. They have some flexibility in what they can do with it to work with their own motherboards and so forth. That's why when I update or flash that BIOS, I get it right from Dell instead of you know, Amy or Phoenix or somebody like that. Now, if you have an old motherboard or Billy Joe Jim Bob's motherboard and you can't find a website for them, maybe they're out of business or something, there's one last resort if you absolutely must update that BIOS, and that is to go to www.esupport.com. That's www.esupport.com, and they have uh, BIOS updates for uh, many, many motherboards that you might be able to select from. Now here I'm running something called VMware Workstation. If you're not familiar with it, what it allows me to do is to run other operating systems from within my existing operating system. So for example, here I'm running Windows XP, and you can see the start menu and all that. I am running Windows XP, that's what I'm training with, but I'm also running VMware. Within VMware, I can run an entirely other operating system. I can run Windows Server 2003, Linux, uh, Unix. I can run other versions of Windows. I can run whatever I want to run. In this case, I'm not going to really run any operating system, although I've got XP Professional installed there. I'm going to just start the virtual machine, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down to launch the CMOS by pressing F2 on the keyboard, which you saw me do just now. I'm also going to expand the screen a little bit so we can see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing. Now you probably saw down at the bottom of the screen, it said very quickly before I got to the screen, press F2 to enter the setup utility, or words to that effect. A lot of times you can't see that. The monitor doesn't warm up fast enough or it flashes by so fast you can't read it uh, properly, so you just kind of have to guess. A lot of times it'll be F1 or F2 or Escape or Delete. So those are some of the common keys I'll just try. And if none of those seem to work, what I'll do is I'll just turn on the power and immediately just hold down any key on the keyboard. And then during post, it'll detect that there's been repetitive entries from a certain key. It detects that as a keyboard error, and it will probably return a message to you on the screen saying something like, moron, leaning on the keyboard error. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and no, not really. It'll say some kind of a keyboard error, and then it will say press any key to enter setup, or it'll say press F2 to enter setup, or something like that. But anyway, gives you a back door to get into setup, which is where we are now. Now, it would be impractical to exhaust every item here because a lot of them aren't A-plus specific anyway. Uh, but what you should do is to go into your own BIOS and just poke around in here and see what the settings are. Don't change anything unless you're exactly sure what you're doing and, and exactly sure what the setting change will, will do. But you can see some of these are self-explanatory, like the date and the time and the diskettes. Uh, here's also hard disk settings. For example, here we have, if I move my arrow keys, no, the mouse doesn't work here. Anytime you see a mouse, that's because I've pressed Control-Alt and VMware releases the mouse that then allows me to you know work with my host mouse here but anyway uh, to get around in the BIOS I don't have a mouse so I just use the arrow keys to get my way around now I go down to the primary master normally these disks will be automatically detected by the BIOS in current versions if it's an older version you might need to go in here and set these things um, again here it's automatically detected which is what the setting is but I could change that and I could go to you know uh, manual instead for example and then once you've done that you can change the settings for the cylinders heads and sectors, which is what it uses to determine what kind of parameters you have for this disk. That sometimes is an important A-plus objective to know, that you can configure the cylinders, heads, and sectors in the setup utility uh, for the hard disks here. So keep that in kind of a thing in mind. One of the things you can do there to get back out of here, you can press escape. It takes you back to the previous screen. It tells you how much memory you have. Uh, other things that are important in this, if I move on to the right, would be the security settings. Remember the supervisor password and the user password? Well, here's where I would enter in those password settings. Other important settings here are the power settings. Notice that for this, the power settings is disabled. Uh, this is also a very rudimentary setting for power. A lot of them are going to be more elaborate than what you see here. Uh, so, for example, one of the things you might see is that you can enable or disable advanced configuration power interface or ACPI settings. This is really something that's passed on to current operating systems that allow the operating systems to control the power settings. Uh, but in any case, here we can just enable or disable these. We can uh, customize these. And then I can say span standby timeout after so many minutes. Or I can choose an auto suspend timeout after so many minutes as well. Now, these settings will be further discussed when we talk about power configuration in our operating systems. 
And then if I arrow over again, I'll see that in the boot settings here, I can choose which removable devices that I have, and I specify floppy drives. And then I can also specify the hard drives that I have installed in this system, uh, whether or not I have uh, bootable add-in cards or SCSI drives here, CD-ROM, and so forth. And what I can do with this as well is to move a device up or down in terms of the boot priority. For example, I hardly ever boot from removable devices. I'm likely, if there's no operating system installed, to boot from the CD drive first. So I'll use the, the plus key to advance that up. And notice that it has now moved up. And then I'll also go to hard drive. This is just me. You can do this however you want to. But this is normally the configuration that I'll have. Boot from CD-ROM drive first. If there's nothing there, go to the hard drive. Nothing there. Boot from the network, which uh, will allow us to be able to identify an installation server such as, well, in Windows, we use something called, um, we use something called I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Oh, remote installation services, that's what it is. That's not really an A-plus exam objective, but just note that you can boot from a network card if you want to. Then also notice that down at the bottom of the screen, we can choose to go back to setup defaults. That's a common key to use there, but it'll tell you which ones to use if you want. Uh, F9 to go back to my defaults or F10 to save whatever settings I've chosen and to exit. And so those are common settings that I can choose. Or if I want to use the menu instead, I can arrow over to exit, and I can choose just from this list of menu which, which things I want to, to select. And that's pretty much it for your basic BIOS settings. Again, many BIOS settings will be more elaborate than this, but this gives you a good idea for the common settings that you'll find in almost any BIOS. And I started to mention ACPI states earlier when we were looking at the BIOS, and I mentioned that you could configure ACPI availability to the operating system. Uh, this is something that you will need to know for A-plus exam objectives, in my experience. So let's go ahead and address what these are, and these will be pretty quick and brief. Uh, the states are officially designated as an S followed by a number, S0 being the first one, which is just full power on. The CPU is up and running. There's, an, uh, there's power conservation basis possible on a per device basis. For example, if, uh, if it's a laptop, sometimes it will turn off power to the network card if it's not plugged into a network cable. So that's possible, but otherwise you're pretty much full power on. S1 would be a, a RAM refresh, but there's no power to the CPU. This is one of the states that we call a sleep mode. So whatever's in RAM is going to be refreshed with a lo little bit of power so that the next time you press the button, it'll then uh, also put power to the CPU and be able to retain whatever memory uh, you had going on or rather whatever data was in the memory. And then S2 will also be a RAM refresh, but this is going to be a lower power state than the S1 state. This is also known as a sleep state. And then for Windows operating systems, we don't really use these much anymore. Now we're pretty much using S3, which is a RAM slow refresh, which backs down the memory to the bare minimum that it needs to to adequately protect the memory. And it can be in standby for a long, long time. This is especially useful for laptops that are trying to conserve uh, battery power. And we call this standby in current Windows operating systems. Windows can also use something called Hibernate. Uh, and with this, it'll take the contents of whatever's in RAM. And instead of charging it with a slow RAM refresh, it will dump the entire contents of RAM out to a file on the hard disk. And this file on the hard disk will then be read the next time you start up the computer, and it will be read into RAM, and it will then restore the system to its previous state. But once, hibernate is, when it's, once it's fully hibernated, and all that data from RAM is stored into that temporary file, it completely powers off. And of course, then there's S5, which is just full power off. In this nugget, we talked about the BIOS, and we started off by discussing ser several terms, such as the BIOS itself, as well as the CMOS, and we talked also about several of the BIOS functions. For example, its ability during the post to check out your various devices and to identify any errors that might be coming up. We also took a look at the CMOS, which is where we store settings to our changes. We also looked at the boot process itself, at least from the hardware level, before the operating system loads. And of course, the BIOS takes a vital part in that. We looked at how to update the BIOS as well. Sometimes that might need to be done because you need to allow certain devices to be detected. Maybe you have a problem with USB devices not properly detected, like you saw in my example. We also took a look at the setup utility itself, and we used a rudimentary setup utility to show you some of the basic settings that are available. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.